and we're here in the doubles final. And Kathy Rinaldi sitting in with me because John Newcomb is uh, playing a, a super senior doubles at the moment. He'll be here as soon as he gets beat. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Kathy's uh, filling in for a while. Kath's got a long day today with the ladies' singles or the women's singles the next two matches. And uh, this will be a tough one, Kath, in men's doubles. You like calling some men's doubles? Well, this will be a first for me, but yes, I'm looking forward to it. This would be a real interesting matchup. You have a well established pair with Ferreira and Leach against a team that's just pairing up for the very first time. Yeah, they've, they've paired for the first time. This is uh, Hewitt and Murphy we're talking about. And interestingly, Ferreira and Leach, when they played their first tournament together, uh, they got to the final in 1998 in Adelaide. So they've been uh, there, but in Adelaide, they lost to Josh Eagle and Andrew Florent in a three setter there. But um, with different partners, Hewitt and Murphy have encountered the Reach for Ferreira team quite a few times. And a month ago, the Tennis Masters Series uh, in Cincinnati, Leighton played with my son Sandon, and uh, uh, Leach and Ferreira beat them in the quarterfinals there, 6-3, 6-6, 4-6-3. And uh, they've never beaten Murney in doubles, though. And uh, they've uh, played, Murney's played against them uh, on three occasions, and he's been successful on all of those. Muni's played with uh, Jonas Bjorkman a couple of times this year against uh, Ferrer and Leach, and uh, they've won both matches in the Masters Series in Toronto and uh, in the semi-finals in Indianapolis. Well, that Mirny is a heck of a doubles player. He won two Grand Slam titles with Serena Williams. And, uh, was in the final of the mixed here yes. yesterday with Anna Kornikova. They actually lost to Rick Leach. And Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. Actually, Fred, that was uh, Ricky Leach. Yeah, Jared Palmer. Jared Palmer and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. I didn't mention Rick Leach is contemplating retirement. And the coach at, uh, at USC for many, many years. Many years. And he and played on the tour with us. That's 35 years ago. And Rick said he's going to join him as the assistant coach and work with his dad. I said the salaries are going to be a little bit different <laughs> the assistant coach down there to what he makes here. Just slightly. On the tour. I think he's pretty well set, though. Well, that's a new strategy these days. They won the toss and you defer to your opponents. How would Mirny choose to serve? So Hewitt and Mirny chose to serve. And what that does, uh, it, it allows, they're both lefties, uh, Ellis Freer and Rick Leach, so they defer. And if your opponent decides to serve, well, even if they decide to receive, you then get the choice of where you want to, which end you want to serve from. Some of the players have favourite ends, depending on the ball toss on the serve. They've got a beautiful day to play today. Time. Well, it's been terrific weather, really, uh, except uh, storms for a couple of days that uh, put the Rise. schedule behind. But the, the start of this year's Open it was cool weather, but very pleasant for the players. And then uh, over the holiday weekend got to be very humid, and then the storms came and sort of put a spanner in the works as far as scheduling was concerned. Quite a few of the players complained about the scheduling a little bit because uh, some of them were playing their second round matches on the Friday of the uh, holiday weekend. That meant that had they continued to go through, they, Philippousis and Gamble, when they played, 
if they had kept on going, they would have had to win six matches in nine days. Well, that's pretty much an impossible task. Best of five sets here if it gets hot. Ferrer and Leach have won three titles this year. Uh, we mentioned they won the Australian Open to get title at Auckland, also on a hard court. And uh, they won a clay court event in Atlanta in April. That was their sixth title. So we're just about ready to go with Big Max to serve. So, Starting off with a bang there. For Aaron Leach deferred, so obviously the big server said, hey, give me the balls. 15 love. Good service game. First time this young team have played together. And an easy first service game, just what you want when you start off a final. So Mooney and Hewitt won game to love. First game. In their round progress to get through, that's what it looked like, Stark and Tano and straight sets. The Woodies, that was the big upset. They won the first set, the Woodies came back in the second and uh, actually had a break in the third, I believe. And Hewitt and Murney came back and won it in a tiebreaker. Then on scenes, Orsonich, Leroy Nesta, that was a tough match for them too. And O'Brien Palmer, they were down match points. They had four match points, couldn't do it. Then O'Brien and Palmer had two, couldn't do it. And then uh, they finally got through on about, I think it was the sixth match point. Love 15. They beat a lot of great teams to get uh, to the final, a lot of well-established teams. Ferreira and Leach teamed up for the first time, as I mentioned, at the beginning of 1988, and they've played exclusively together since then. Oh, boy. That's not how you want to start off your first service game with two doubles. No. Nope. Strangely enough, I played against Ellis Freer a couple of weeks ago with my son Sandon out in a tournament, uh, and we played. And he started off exactly the same way. He starts off, he's, he warms up, but his first service game, he served a couple of doubles. It was sort of a gift game, and it's not an easy way to start a final. Best of three sets, three break point opportunities now. Ferreira knowing he's under the gun there and the big long arms of Max Murney were daunting him and he found a way down the line. 13, 14. down the middle from Hewitt, didn't overplay it, so they've got the early break. Two games to love. Kathy, you're a top 10 doubles player and uh, won a lot of doubles titles. Uh, what were the, the basic fundamentals that you tried to work with? I always picked a great partner to, be, to <laughs> begin with. Now, I think, uh, uh, well, especially in men's tennis, they cross so, so often. I think that's really a key in women's tennis, too, to because so many of the women have great return of serve. You've got to keep them guessing out there. So what you're saying, the early stages of a match, the, the 
teams should do a lot of poaching, a lot of quick movement at the net, try and go, take your opponent's eye off the volley. Good doubles teams do move a lot early in the match. Bad for service. Leighton Hewitt's first service game. It's so great to see Leighton Hewitt and single here. Why, why do you think a lot of the top men don't play doubles? Because in the women, so many of the top ten players, you see them all playing doubles. I just think they feel it's too much for them if they're going to get through into the single semifinals, quarterfinals. They don't like so to play doubles. Sometimes I'll take a wild card in a tournament, which I don't necessarily agree with, just to get some match play and then pull out if they're still in the singles. Hewitt doesn't do that, though. He, he finishes. If he commits for the doubles, and one of those players that uh, gives 110%, even if he is still in the singles. Yeah, he's just so much fun to watch. He's got so much energy out there and a lot of personality. 40-15. Very explosive return of serve, Ellis Ferreira. Uh, he does finesse a few of them. But if he gets into a groove on the return, he cracks some beautiful shots and uh, hits them very hard. And you're facing volleys like Hewitt was then, right off the shoelaces, but hit with a lot of pace. Oh, terrific hands by all four players. Advantage Hewitt. Hewitt moving into the centre of the court there and finishing off the backhand. So Hewitt and Ernie, an old serve, and it's two games to one. Three, three love, I'm sorry. Three love, they've got the break. Beautiful shot. We've shown you that uh, a number of times over the two weeks of the Millennium Open here from Flushing Meadows. And uh, you can see the folks getting into the stands here. It's uh, just after 11 o'clock. We've said it on numerous occasions. It's a tough time to play. 11, but there's a few more people here in the doubles final than there has been for uh, some of the early quarterfinal singles matches. So that's a good sign. women's matches coming up a little bit later it will be a packed house rick leach obviously has the most experienced of them and he's got a very distinguished grand slam career he's won five grand slam doubles titles and reached seven other finals he's a veteran and as i mentioned he's going to retire after this year this will be his last grand slam appearance and then they will probably go to India, where the World Doubles Finals are being played. That's the week after the Davis Cup Final. So you can see why Leach is such a good player. A good, solid first serve. Nothing startling. He could play for another five years, in my opinion, because he's got very good hands, makes solid returns, and gets a lot of first serves in. I was actually surprised to see that he was retiring, especially having a great yeah. year like he's been having. And Three one now with Hewitt and Murney still with the service break. Smart shot from Leach there as he knew Hewitt had to come back to cover the sideline. And he's moving sideways, so he throws up the lob. And he caught Hewitt a little bit off balance.
Wow, Leach was all over that. He saw Mirny but had to hit that off his shoelaces. He was looking for looking for the poach there. Well, it was in. They said a very explosive player is Ellis Ferreira. He played a terrible first service game. And he's picked up the pace since then. It's this forehand here. Bullet right down the middle. Break points, three of them now. Fifteen forty. First time that uh, Hewitt and Mooney have played together. But it was just three weeks ago where they faced one another when... Uh, Hewitt played with San and Stolle and they beat Murnie and Jonas Bjorkman in the final in uh, Indianapolis. So including that tournament, Hewitt's on a 10 match winning streak in doubles here. Having a great tournament. Incredible. Not over yet. Still a break point. They've saved two of them. Oh, oh right on that the line. Go. He jagged that one. It was a terrific serve from Muni. Way out wide. Caught the top of the frame from Freer and fell in. They're back on serve. 3-2. Another double, a foot fault, I think that was called on Ellis Ferreira. Served to this game. He's got to patch that up in a hurry. Beautiful striker of the ball, Ferreira. Very clean, very crisp. It was an effortless shot, that one down the line from the backhand. Beautiful return. Just what you're looking for to get it down low. Not going to smack volleys for out right, right winners with pace, but good doubles players make you beat them at the net, and that's the percentage player that Rick Leach will always use. He gets the first volley back, the second one he tries to find a little bit of an opening, and he did. Quick hands at the net again from Leach. They're back on serve now at three all. Ricky Leach has played, this is his 57th appearance in a Grand Slam doubles event. And his first Grand Slam event at the US in 1982. Very distinguished career. Plus, he's a very nice guy, great guy. Leach has got a hobby of collecting tennis memorabilia. He's actually, his house burnt down about five or six years ago and destroyed a lot of the stuff and a lot of the trophies. And he wrote to all the major associations, particularly the very important Grand Slam trophies, and uh, they all 
got trophies made and, and sent them back to him. So he still had them. So it was very nice. And it just shows you what they think of Rick Leach as a person. Maybe you're, you're willing to give him your Venus and Serena dolls. <laughs> Only if you get them signed. <laughs> I'm getting them signed. 15 all. there. Again, the experience of Leach. He saved those for important points, and he figured that uh, Big Max would move. He did. So it's a break point now for Ferreira Leach. Yes. Fine serve. It's an area that has really improved even in the two weeks here of the championships. That's the hardest shot in tennis right there. Look where he bounced that baby with a backhand smash. He made it look easy. Trouble there, but Hewitt uh, battles through it. It's on serve, 4 3 now. Not the same hustle and bustle as there was earlier in the championships to get back. Uh, you can see the action is uh, not so great on the outside court. Still a couple of junior matches being played out there, and some uh, has one there. That'll be a senior doubles match. And now we're back to live action on Stadium Court, the men's doubles final. And they're on serve. Hewitt and Manny broke the first game of the match. And then they lost serve to get back to on serve. Love it, now it's 4-3. Good news, though, came out last night. Sydney has been selected to host the 2001 Tennis Masters Cup. That's the final singles event of the year. It used to be called the ATP Tour Championships and now with the Grand Slam Cup. And so ATP and the ITF International Tennis Federation got together and the inaugural Tennis Masters Cup is going to be played in Lisbon uh, in November and next year it will be hosted in Sydney. That's terrific news. We played at the Sydney Superdome, the 18,000 seat venue where the Olympic gymnastics and basketball events will be played. Smart shot there from uh, on the overhead instead of trying to go for the winner. Get it back three-quarter pace down the middle and get better court position. Good stretch there from Big Max.
It's a tough serve, that one of uh, Rick Leach's, because it doesn't have the pace, Kath, as a lot of the other big servers. You've got to generate your own pace off it, not just meet the ball. And uh, Mernie's don't have a few problems with that. 40-30. Again there, just well placed, right in the corner. Pinpoint accuracy, if you remember, that's how he finished his last service game with Hewitt, drawing him out wide, right in that corner. For all. Best of three sets, this men's doubles final used to be played over the best of five. program coming your way today after this the two women's semi-finals single semi-finals Davenport Dementieva and Hingis and Williams oh, what a smart play by Leach saw both players closing in on the net through the lob up over their head his wife liked that one she was the one in the Merv sweater applauding both players there, so he's out of court, goes back to Leach, who's got the left-hander and is able to slide that one away. Right on top of the net for that volley. $340,000 to the winning team here. Split. unseeded team to in the open era that is from 68 to now to reach the US Open final no unseeded team has come through and won the men's doubles title though. so seventh time this they've reached the final but no unseeded team has won it serve five games to four for a set rather warm conditions out here and uh, quite a good crowd starting to get through right at the bottom you don't see a lot of folks in those corporate seats but as you get above the the punters the actual public that uh, pay good money way and they're starting to filter in Oh, what a <laughs> leap, what a stretch from Mooney. He was right on top of the net, otherwise he would not have made that one. Kind of gave him a fake there. He was looking for the ball down the middle, but stretched out and what an incredible volley. Well, Leighton Hewitt, far and away the best returner so far in the match. Mernie not able to get too many in at this stage, down low, 15-30. Good serve. That's where you've got to serve 
Hewitt on a situation like that. And Ricky Leach is right on top of the net. Hewitt just gets so much of an angle on the backhand. Ferreira doesn't have the, doesn't get the angle on that serve out wide that Leach does. That's a fine return. Good time to get it to set point. Turn down the line. Incredible shot from Hewitt. He saved that. He hasn't played it all set. And the good doubles players put those in a mind bank. And when they need it, they get it. 6 4, first set, Hewitt Mooney. We'll go to any lengths for total news coverage. And that is the greatest swim you will see for a long time. Now at 7 o'clock. Get the complete picture tonight with Fox Sports News. On Fox Sports, the official film of the British Open. From the old course at St Andrews, the home of golf, and the scene of Tiger Woods' record-breaking victory. 7.30 Tuesday night on Fox Sports. Leighton Hewitt there. Come on! That's the one. It's the one he doesn't pound his heart. The rocky theme comes out when he gets stuck into it. But yeah, that was a premeditated backhand. He was going to go down there, didn't I think, on that set point. And he made the shot. So, as I said, an unseated team has not won in the open era. In the finals. Seven times they've been there. And all those teams have lost in the final. This could be a first. Long way to go yet, though. 15 all. Ricky Leach going straight back at the body. <laughs> Max looking for it down the middle with the outstretched racket. He, he got hit with that ball, but it actually went back over the net. Fred, I think those spinning serves are the toughest one in doubles. At least they were for me. When you have to hit them out of your strike zone and reach up high for the ball. Can't get much pace on the shot, can you? And if they're closing in or if you get yeah. it up high, then your partner eats it or you're in a tough situation. Of course, if I had a serve like that. Yeah. <laughs> Five aces now for the Hewitt Murney team. Yeah. We'll play a game. So this game of the second set go to Hewitt and Murney. There are the stats for the first set, Kath. Well, as you can see, it's pretty close. Total points, 32 to 28. And... Uh, All around, it's pretty close. Yeah. Except points one on second serve, Leach and Freire. So that just shows you that the returning of Hewitt and Murney is just a little bit better than that of uh, Ferreira and Leach. First serve percentage is not much in it. That's why it was a close set. Just hit that one. I don't think he meant it to be that short, but it's a good play because uh, Hewitt was already a meter behind the baseline. 
in Leach plays percentages in doubles. Not a lot of power. He's one of the old brigade, Kat. What's that? He's one of the old brigade. He yeah. plays percentages more so than just. Well, he's got such a great feel for the court and great hands. 40 love. Double fault from the Ferreira Leach combo, and this man's been responsible for most of them. Yes, Leach again, great hands, just a little angle volley, far oh, enough yeah. out of reach to make it work. One all, second set. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Stabs at it, and it works. Lots of angles in that point. Oh, yeah. A bit of a problem with the sun by the looks of things there. Uh, difficult at this time of the day. If, if you make the serve, a lot of the times you just don't pick up the next shot. I love 30. It's a great second serve by Leighton Hewitt right into the body of Rick Leach there. Couldn't do much with that. times that uh, Ellis Ferreira has played the little chip he came right in behind it good angle volley from Hewitt as he came in kept it low enough 30 all oh. beautiful return Boy, he caught that early. Break point now for Ferreira and Leach. made it good body serve and each couldn't do anything with it he tried to just pop it up in the air it was in the right spot nearly right on top of the net this one was just a little long and the mac cam <laughs> super slow-mo camera just uh, it really gives you 
It's a good shot on the baseline. Hewitt and Mooney, two games to one, one set to love. Well, that's an experienced team there. Just discussing what they need to do to get back into this match. They got back to uh, all square in the first set before a blistering two-handed backhand on set point went flying past Leach to give Hewitt and Mooney the opening set. And they're on serve, so experienced teams will get together and discuss patterns and whether they're going to keep the ball low or what they're going to do on first point. Leach to serve. That's where that lefty serves come in handy. They slice that ball out wide. Gets a, little, gets a little more movement than uh, Rick gets a little more movement than Ellis Ferreira on his, doesn't he? Yeah. He, it's not as hard, but it's it's a better result, I think. Oh, terrific play there by Rick Leach. This is experienced teamwork here. You've got to be playing for a while. See there, Ferreira watches him and then goes down the middle and then instinctively moves across to cover that next shot. Good teamwork. You do that when you played with Jill, talk about where you're going to serve as much as they do today, Kath. It's a, it's a oh, new trend, isn't it? You absolutely, yeah. We communicated after every point. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, that's the great hands of Rick Leach. Sometimes they can be lucky, can't they? Absolutely. That was pure luck. That ball looked like it was going to sail way long. 
Ken Leighton checking the sun. And they're not real happy with that. And there's a bit of a laugh to Max Murney because the safe spot to do that if you have a look in the sun is not to go for the angle, get it back down the middle of the court somewhere. Went over the high part of the net. 30 all. Terrific pickup on that half volley. You saw where Ferreira was. If it had been just another half a metre closer to him, he'd have snatched that one on the backhand. Good effort from Murney. to two, Hewitt Murney lead, one set to love. Oh, that's just, not, that's a Tony Roach volley. Tony Roach had the best backhand volley in the business and all the players will attest to that. And that was a very similar type shot. Tony Roach home at the moment, practicing with uh, Pat Rafter, getting ready for the Olympics. And most of the top players going down here. I believe Gustavo Quirton is now going to play for Brazil. Mentioned yesterday that he had withdrawn and uh, news spread around here in a hurry, but apparently the ITF and Brazil have come to an arrangement that will allow him to realise his dream to play for Brazil. That means he's going to be allowed to wear his clothing. So different. Big opportunity here for Hewitt and Murney. Yeah, break point. Oh, just oh. missed. And the frustration. Yeah, good hands again. Ricky Leach again. That short volley, if he gets it back deep with not a lot of pace, then the big arm from Murney can make the shot, have a crack at it, but uh, not with those little short ones. Got to move forward to him. Game point. Well, after surviving a break point and Leighton Hewitt got frustrated, he had a whack down the middle that just missed it on that two-fisted backhand, so they're all even at three all. serve was a little slower love 15 
Oh, what a beautiful return by Alice Ferreira. That's a good move there from Ellis Ferreira because uh, he made Leighton Hewitt go for a little bit more on the volley. So an opportunity now. Still two break points. A lot of break point opportunities missed, Kathy. Yes, they've only had uh, they've had eight break point opportunities, but have only converted one. So it's kind of been the big tale of this match so far. All the way back to Juice. Boy, I just love to watch this Leighton Hewitt play. <laughs> Anybody who loves all those Rocky movies. <laughs> well, a very good game there from Hewitt and Mooney. They were down, triple break point, and they got out of it. It's four games to three. They lead one set to love. Welcome John Newcomb to the microphone, who's struggled up here from downstairs after a, a big battle with the... Uh, did you play? Nastasi Iroko playing with Alex Metrovelli. A little slower than the tempo of what's happening down there, Fred, on the Arthur Ashe court. Well, they've had a, a good first set, and you'd have liked the backhand down the line that Leighton hit on, on, uh, on, match, on set point to give them the first set. It was premeditated. He hadn't done it and hadn't hit one down there. Set point he did, and that clinched it. He's been the best returner on the court so far, Nick uh, Leighton. Uh, Max has come up with some good ones, but not the uh, consistent return today. 15 love. They're good hustlers, Leach and Ferreira. They get, they get very close to the net, don't they? And they, uh, I think they're always susceptible to the lob. One of the better returns from Murney. Met that one early. If you watch Ferreira up at the net after Leach serves, he's back about three metres from the net and watch him run forward. He charges the net trying to cut down your angle of return. It's really a sitting duck for a lob on a big point, isn't he? Because yep. his whole weight's moving forward. Oh, 
of slow getting in there. Big Max and got caught. Big stat here is, has been the uh, break points. Yeah, uh, Ferreira and Leach have had a lot of opportunities, but not able to convert. They're just one of eight. And two of five for Hewitt Murney team. That's four games all in this second set of the doubles final. Leighton Hewitt looking to become the youngest player to win a Grand Slam doubles title in the Open era. Again, no unseeded team has won here in the Open era. Seven times they've got to this stage and lost in the final. I think this has worked out great for Leighton playing in the doubles here because he had a day off from singles yesterday but he played his doubles semis and that was a nice tight match. Is the final today and... Yeah, I was telling Cheryl, I talked to him, I saw him in the locker room and his parents were down in the player lounge earlier this morning when we arrived and uh, they said it's worked out a lot better than most of the other Grand Slams because the doubles final is played on the Friday. Oh, and if you do well in the singles, you can still hang around, play doubles, and a couple of days off, he'd rather do this in a competitive spirit than go out there and just work out on his game for an hour or two. 40 love. Yes, he's played so well this week. Leighton in his uh, round of 16s and his quarterfinal and to finish on Wednesday and then not have another match until Saturday. It's really good to have this very tight competitive match play before he plays tomorrow against Sampras. Oh, that was wild. a wild one. Rush that wasn't in position for it. 40 30. Yeah. Max is still running. <laughs> Knocks off the volley, continues his way around. It's 5 4. Hewitt Murney, one set to love. Some advice. Stay focused. You know the stats, Nick, for the first couple of sets? Yeah, Hewitt and Murney are, are getting uh, hurt a little bit on the points one on second serve. They're only at 48. And uh, their opponents are at 59% of points one on second serve, which is very high, isn't it? Total points one slightly ahead for Ferreira and Leach. That's where you've, you've got to try to penetrate in doubles, isn't it? Win some points yep. on the second serve. You've got to make every second serve count. If you're returning the serve, you're going to sort of work your opponents over. So it couldn't be much more even than this. An hour and 14 minutes for a couple of sets. Murnie started the match off and he started the third set off. for the Jimmy Connor sky hook and he missed it. There's a little bit of fun. 30 love. Net for a Cliff Drysdale tried that shot uh, and he and Owen Davidson beat Ken Rose and myself yesterday but it wasn't quite the same. He never got off the ground very well.
Yes, well played. Tough shot to play and a good shot from Rick Leach down that sideline there to the backhand. 40 love. a little bit of touch down the line there jogs to the sideline one game to love players will just walk around at the first game of each set there's no sit down period there's no break had some nice disguise on yeah. that backhand Ellis Ferreira so first for his team in the third set with Kathy on that little volley. Nick. He doesn't go for a lot on that. He just drops it short, which means the opponent has got to keep moving forward to it. Unless it bounces up high, bounces up high, you can't really get a crack at it, can you? 15 love. Yeah, the, the problem you face when a pair like Leach and Ferreira you're playing against and they, they keep crowding the net, they cut down the room that you can get past them when they're that close to the net. And so I think you've just you got to go over the top. You have to go over the top to move them back from the net. And once you move them back a little and create a little, little bit of uncertainty, that opens up some little angles for you to utilise uh, yourself in your ground strokes. 30-15. Doubles play is all about creating those little openings that you work for and you may be doing something and hitting your shots a certain direction now, thinking that in 20 minutes time or half an hour you will have created an opening somewhere else. Was Look how close he again. was yep. there. He anticipated that shot though, and Ricky Leach dumped the volley short. The only two shots that Mooney could have played then was that little angle or the lob. He couldn't have had a hit at anything. No, and the uh, the, the little angle, he hit it perfectly, mm. but right on top it's of the too net. close to the net. One all, final set. Fell in. Miss hit. You're taking a little bit off the serve. You don't need to go for the big serve if you get in the right spot with a fellow like Murney at the net. 30-15. Yeah, that's just a three-quarter pace serve that Hewitt's yep. hitting in now. That's really all you need in doubles. Occasionally go for your bigger one. Oh. There's that line judge there that Hewitt hit. You can see where he's standing because he doesn't want to be on the other side of Rick Leach and then get the oh. view obstructed. So here having a little bit of difficulty on serve. In the last three service games he has struggled. I think it's great for him to play uh, doubles. I uh, hope he plays uh, a little bit more as time goes on. Well, he gets another first serve in, three-quarter pace. Pays dividends. It's two games to one, Hewitt Moon.
Best of three sets. Best of three sets. This match. Best of five at the Australian. Wimbledon. And at Wimbledon. Best of three at the French. French. Nice little volley from Rick Leach. Not a lot of pace on it, but he saw, out of the corner of his eye, he saw Hewitt go and just had no pace and just a little bit too far out of Hewitt's reach. Yeah, the reason why, uh, one of the reasons I think it'd be great for Leighton to play more doubles is that he hits all the shots that he doesn't hit in singles. Yeah. He hardly ever serves and volleys in singles. Uh, he doesn't come to the net that much. So it's just sort of rounding off parts of your game. I, I always felt that Ivan Lendl should have played more doubles. More doubles yeah. Would have helped him at, in his Wimbledon Crusades. Certainly would have helped him with his volley. Because when he did play, he played quite well. He used to, because of the returner set. Two games all, final set. Uh, Max Murney's dad and in front with the cap on is uh, Leighton Hewitt's mum. Quite a nice easy service action on Murney that he has. And he's a big fellow so follows it up nicely to the net. He improved his singles ranking. He's currently in the race, champions race at 52. He was 75 when he finished last year, end of 99. So Hewitt and Rennie hold. It's three games to two. Third set. That is the huge scoreboard at the back or the top of this Arthur Ashe Stadium. Quite a few folks in attendance right now. 3 2, third set. As I mentioned, Max Murney is coached by his dad. You had a look at his dad, Nikolai, tennis player himself. Here's a Little, little opening, a tiny little one. Love 15. And get the first point of the game. You can start to try to work the server over. Let's see what Leighton can do here. Nani oh. from Belarus. He's played in their Davis Cup team since 1994. One of the few players that doesn't bounce the ball. I oh, know he did a bounce then. Did a bounce. Sort of prepares quickly for his serve and gets into the service action before you realise he started it. Darren Cahill in the red T-shirt there, and in front of him is uh, Leighton's dad, Glenn. Thirty-fifteen. 
three games. Three all. Can't get much closer than this. We're through the seventh game of the third set. By much that one, and he hooked it in down the line. Leighton Hewitt's won four titles this year in singles. First time ever for him in a Grand Slam semi final of the singles. First time in a Grand Slam doubles final, too, yep. isn't it? Yep. All. Of the two pairs, Fred, at so just this stage of the match, Leach and Ferreira seem to be have it going together just a little bit more yeah. at this stage. Teamwork. Been oh. playing exclusively together, Nick, since 1998, since Adelaide. They played their first tournament in Adelaide in 1998. Lost in the final to Eagle and Ferreira. Good move, good volley. So well, that'll give Hewitt a little bit of a, a lift if he can get a win the next two points here. He's gone off the boil just a little bit on his return of serve in the, the last mm -hmm. 20 minutes. So this is what he needs as a convincing service game because he's been struggling on serve. Last three service games have been tough ones. 40-15. Oh, that one. Terrific return from Rick Leach there. Barely over the top of the net. Caught Mooney by surprise. to three, Hewitt Mooney lead. First time they've played together and they're 4-3. Things can break open in a hurry. This stage of a match, just a lucky call or a net court or a couple of great shots can break this open. Bye. Arthur Ashe Stadium now, three parts full. And after this, the two women's semi-finals. Elena Dementieva. Dementieva, the youngster from Russia, takes on Lindsay Davenport, who took out Serena Williams. Serena Williams then withdrew from the doubles with a bad foot with her sister in the semi final stages. And then following that, Martina Hingis, who has won this championship, takes on Venus Williams, the reigning Wimbledon champ. Good serve, good solid serve for Leach. They're serving well, they're set, Leach and Ferreira. They're getting a lot of first serves in and they're serving right into the corners. Very difficult to get a good return back under those conditions. Fault. 
Another serve down the middle to Hewitt. And Leach has had a lot of success going out wide to the Hewitt backhand. But as Nuke said, you've got to keep those things in the back of your mind and you've got to change direction, change the serve, give them something different when things get tight. Good service game from the veteran Rick Leach for all. Yes, as long as they keep getting this very good amount of first serves into play, it's going to be difficult for Hewitt and Mooney to do anything. Their job is to try to hold their own serves. And we're heading towards a tiebreaker at yep. the moment. Tiebreaker for the title. Well, they won the semi-final, Hewitt and Mooney, in a tiebreaker. They were down two match points in that tiebreaker. They had four match points at 4-5, and Jared Palmer got out of it, and then Palmer and O'Brien had two match points in the tiebreaker. So exciting doubles here. A lot of them finishing in tiebreakers. Third set. John McEnroe is a proponent of thinking that the tiebreak system is a good one, that it creates a lot of energy, a lot of excitement very quickly at the end. It's like Russian roulette for me. I'd like to see them played out. See the better team do some work. Thirty love. Missed it. Whoa. Pretty close. What are your thoughts on tiebreakers in final sets? I'd like to see it played out. I just think you've worked so hard to get there and so tough. And things are decided by a little bit of fortune one way or the other in that situation. Well, a good service game again from Mooney. He has no a good crowd on hand to watch this one down to the wire. It looks as though it may go there. It's five games to four. Mooney and Hewitt, but they have the advantage. And I think it's a good one that you put that uh, one game in front, Nick, when you're playing a third and final set or a fifth and final set. Five. They get a little window of opportunity here. They can try and do something. Ferreira to serve. That's a great point from Mooney. That's the lob that Nick was talking about, and Rick Leach wasn't in any position. Good effort from Ferreira to get back and make that shot. Yeah, you can see <laughs> Leach never moved, did he? Because his whole weight was pushed forward. The ribbon tried to get up in the air. And Leighton's just going through a little bit of a frustrating time in his return of serve. Normally so solid in yep. that department. He hasn't made uh, too many in this set. That's a better one. Finally got under yeah. one. Forcing the half volley, and uh, you can bet that Ferreira saw this man make a move. 30 all. Oh. <laughs> Don't you hate that when you're the net player and you make the move and, yeah. and leave your line open? 
particularly when your partners come in behind such a good return. Game point. Yes, well played. Yep. Some pressure on Ferreira here. Yes. Beautiful return and nice net play from Murney. Well, he was two metres in there. He was wanting to block that one back and get in behind it. Good it's a serve. Big ask, isn't it, mm -hmm. to get in an almost half volley the first serve back? I wouldn't call it a high percentage, <laughs> high percentage move. Leighton not happy with that. Ricky Leach's wife cheering him on there. His wife Christy, they've got a little girl. She's about six years old now. Beaver Mooney, isn't he? Yeah, Puts he that volley yeah. away and turns around and jumps around. Gives, uh, gives Leighton some skin and <laughs> on to the next point. Used to do that with Ken Rosewell all the time, didn't you? Have <laughs> high fives after every point. Uh, that's amazing how the game has changed. <laughs> 40-15. Got to go with the flow. <laughs> give me some skin. Isn't that what Muscles used to say to me? Fred, give me some skin. Oh, he was right on top of that. 14, 14. It's just too quick. The turn was too quick from Leach. It's another play, isn't it, to do when... Um, when someone's crowding the net like that, it's just bash it straight, straight at, at them. them. Yeah, that's a that's a play they use a lot these days on the return. Particularly on a second serve. And have quick hands to get the job done. Still game point. And a tight one, it's 6 5. Well, an interesting stage here as the veterans, the number three seeds, Ferreira and Leach, contemplate what's going to happen. They're down 6 5, and the youngsters here, unseeded in the championship here, an unseeded team has never won the title in the open era. And they're the ones that are leading 6 5. Interesting first couple of points coming up. Oh, brilliant Beautiful. return. One-hander. 
Yep, single-hander. That's the man that Hewitt and Murney need to get going on the return of serve is Leighton Hewitt. He's got the better return of serve of the, the Murney-Hewitt pair. We need him to start making a lot of returns at this crucial stage of the match. Murney really asks a lot of himself, doesn't he, on the return of serve, the way he charges Charge. inside the baseline to return the first serve. Particularly when he tries to hit it so hard. At this stage of the match, I'd be standing back a little bit and trying to make them hit some volleys. Second serve. Ferreira right on top of the net. shot. That's a good rally. That was a terrific shot from Ferreira to end it off. A tough position in the court too. Looks as if he almost round-armed that smash. I guess he smashed it. They hit it so hard. Forty Good serve, good return, good volley. Perfect doubles point. Played under extreme pressure from the veteran as his wife, Christy, looks on. Yes, it was a nice low return. He was sitting on Mooney to make the move, though. So this Millennium doubles here at the US Open will be decided a tiebreaker. A team that reaches seven with a margin of two will win the title. It's a big start from the big man. He's practicing his volleys, looking for one here. <laughs> Look at him, he's dancing. Let's go, says Max. Alley shuffle there, here we go. <laughs> Come in and throw a right hook and a big forehand volley. Good serve. They're serving pretty smart to Leighton. They're mixing it up down the middle, into the body, out wide. There's oh. the lob, sitting duck. I don't think he meant it, though. Did it was he? a defensive return, wasn't it? it was probably the only one he could do because the serve straight at him. But uh, both players there, yeah, Rick Leach moving forward and Alice Ferreira looking for a backhand volley. So mini break now. Hewitt to serve two points. 2-1. Two, yeah, for service. Players box there with both sets of parents of Hewitt and Mooney cheering their kids on. Well, right when he needed it, it's a good sign. Four games to one. Four points Four to one. Four points to one. I'm sorry, and uh, Hewitt goes for a new stick. So he may have been a break a string there. Tough time to pick up a new racket. It doesn't seem to worry them. They no. just 
just going uh, all struggling <laughs> the same. I wouldn't let mine go. Yeah. Keep that lucky racket in your hand, huh? One four. There's a big second serve. Could be a tough second serve here. Oh, he'd be disappointed with that one, Leighton. Second serve and... Pretty much in the slot, wasn't it, for yeah. him? Yeah. Big opportunity missed. Didn't quite get it down low enough, Mernie. Ricky Leach answered the questions that were being asked of him there. Now it's up to Max Mernie to see if he can answer the questions. He needs to win his two points on surf. And that'll set him up with match point if he can. Yep. 4 3. points doesn't hold back for Herrera, does he on a return like that no he Goes didn't for a broke strange sort of play on a second mm -hmm. serve to just try to rip it take a little bit of pace off get it back make the server hit a first volley five three yeah. so the unseated team of hewitt and Noni. Are at match point. Nail biting time. Chance for Leighton Hewitt to create his own little yep. bit of history here. Youngest player ever to win a Grand Slam doubles match. In the open era. Having a little bit of a, giving himself a bit of a gobful yeah, there, Leighton was. was yeah. <laughs> Figured he played the wrong shot. Was still match point. Well, well it's on his three. racket now. <laughs> six, five, will Ellis Ferreira try to rip the return? I think Fred? he will. I think that's the way he plays. So what would you do? Get it in three-quarter pace first I'd, serve. I'd do it straight at the body, just three-quarter pace, and hope for the best. <laughs> there it is. He went for it. Big first serve down the middle. And what an effort for young Leighton Hewitt, the youngest player to have won a Grand Slam doubles title in this Open era. Max Mooney, it's his first Grand Slam doubles, men's doubles. He's won a couple of mixed doubles. <laughs> Parents are pretty happy. $340,000 US dollars split between the uh, two players and uh, beautiful trophies. Yes, that's a that's a major thrill there for Leighton and it'll probably give him a little bit of a burst too. Yep. Uh, Got his single semi-final against Pete Sampras tomorrow. He's had a good hit out on the centre court here uh, at the Open and come out the winner in a tight match. So it won't do him any harm at all leading into tomorrow's semi-finals. That's match point again. You can see Max Murney, he's all over the middle of the court there, blanketing anything that came back. Another good look at it, just three-quarter pace down the middle. <laughs> what a thrill. The father of the country won three consecutive U.S. national doubles titles. 
And uh, Leighton Hewitt there uh, whacked the ball up into the stadium. They actually tried to get a ball out of this stadium with a baseball player here at the start of the tournament. And uh, Jeff Taranga couldn't get it anywhere but about three quarters way up the stand. That's the scoreline, 6-4, 5-7, 7-6. It's always tough to lose in a tiebreaker situation and uh, the presentation will be made here to the winners and the runners up. That's the photographers down there to record the victory here. And it's the four players concerned out there with tournament director Jay Snyder. And it's Tony Trabert who will be doing the presentation. And he's just waiting for the OK to get underway. You want me to go down there? Yeah, how long do you want it? Ladies and gentlemen, did you enjoy that? Vice President of the United States Tennis Association, Barbara Smith. Barbara? Thank you, Tony. To all our wonderful fans, thank you for supporting this Open. We think it's been great. You've made it great. The players have made it great. Thank you, and come back next year. Thank you, Barbara. It's now my pleasure to introduce the fine sponsor of the 2000 U.S. Open Men's Doubles Championship, Mr. Wick Simmons, President and CEO, Prudential Securities. Wick. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, gentlemen, for a great match. Second time in three years we've been to a tie break in the third, and it's great. Uh, I also want to thank all of you who came today, because I know you all love to watch doubles. I hope you like to play it, too. And I've got one suggestion, and that is next year, you get everybody to leave the house one hour early, and we pack this place for this great doubles tournament. Wick, I think you have a check for our runners-up. I do have a check, Tony, a check for $170,000. Rick, congratulations. Runners-up check. Wick Simmons is a good tennis player Rick, in his uh, own right. Congratulations on a wonderful tournament. Uh, you're the current, you two are the current Australian Open champions. You won five Grand Slam doubles champions. You can't get any closer than this one. Well, it was really a treat to be back in the finals here in this great stadium. And uh, at my age, you know, I'm still happy just to be playing. <laughs> and Ellis, you two have played together since 1998. I, I suppose you'll play some more together, won't you? Pardon me? Uh, well, I'd like to. Unfortunately, uh, Rick is retiring at the end of the year, so I'm a little disappointed with that. I wish I had caught him a little earlier in my career. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure to play with such a fantastic tennis player. Congratulations to our runners-up. And Barbara, you have a trophy for our finalists. Well, it's a great honor to present this trophy to the runners-up. To Rick and Alice, congratulations on a great turn. Thank you very much. Good job. <laughs> Wick, I think you have uh, something for our champions. I do, Tony. A check for three hundred and forty thousand dollars. Doubles pays. Max, congratulations. Great match. Leighton, you got a little more work to do. Max, if you could come over here a second. Congratulations. You've had a fabulous U.S. Open. You were runner-up in the mixed doubles yesterday. Had a great match with Magnus Norman. Now you're the U.S. Open doubles champion. How does that feel? Well, it's a wonderful feeling. I'm delighted to, with my performance over the last couple of weeks. I just uh, would like to thank our supporting team. Uh, they had a huge impact on our performance during these last two weeks. 
thanks to them and uh, thanks to a great partner of mine, Leighton. So hopefully we can team up at some point again. Late, you two were the seventh unseated doubles team to reach the finals in the open era. You're the first doubles team to win it. You were also the youngest in the Grand Slam era. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's been an unbelievable week. This is the first time Max and I have teamed up and uh, to come out here and win a Grand Slam doubles title is fantastic for me and uh, you know I'd like to thank Max for playing with me and I'd also like to thank all the fans for coming out and watching doubles final because uh, you know it is a lot of great tennis and uh, you know hopefully it'll be great to come back with Max and defend the title next to you. All right Leighton congratulations. Barbara you have another trophy to present I believe. I do, and it's a beautiful bowl, and their names will be inscribed on it, and I know that they will remember this day for all their lives. Congratulations, Max. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2000 U.S. Open men's doubles champions, Leighton Hewitt and Max Birney. Congratulations. Well, Tony but introducing those boys and they'll go up and have these photographs taken that will go to all the tennis magazines and newspapers around the world and uh, what a thrill it is as Max Mooney said he's won a couple of mixed doubles this is his first men's doubles Leighton Hewitt the youngest fellow to have done it in the open era and uh, you just you got to give a thought to uh, the performance of Rick Leach and Ellis Ferreira. Ricky Leach has been out there since 1982 on the tour. Has decided he's going to call it quits and go and join his dad as assistant coach at USC. We used to play against his dad, Dick, many moons ago, and they've played in father and son events. And he's got a couple of brothers as well. But these boys, as Barbara Smith mentioned, will never forget this. Copies of this photo will go on their, their wall at home. And Wick Simmons now joining there as the boss of uh, Prudential. He's a very good tennis player himself. And uh, he likes to play. And, uh, actually, the great Rod Laver does quite a bit of work for his company and uh, keeps Wick's tennis up to speed. And uh, as they mentioned, the... Uh, a good crowd on hand here. I think it's the best crowd we've had for a number of years for a men's doubles final. Uh, normally it, it's it's played at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. Not too many things happening here in New York. We've mentioned that throughout the the telecast for the last two weeks as the group all get there for a group photo. But it's nice to see because doubles is, um, is a specialty sport these days and not enough of the top players play. As Leighton said in his speech, it's, it's nice to get out there and the crowd come and support it because they're trying to get more of the top players to compete in the doubles events. And it's uh, with crowd support and sponsors like this that uh, this can help.